This episode is brought to you by Playapod, the best cross-platform podcast app for iOS and Android. Just visit playapod.com and download it for free. We all make choices. But in the end, our choices make us. So choose wisely. Subscribe to It's Eric Nagel wherever podcasts are found. And leave a positive review. Won't you kindly? It's Eric Nagel. It starts now. What up, my Nagel? What up, my Nagel? What up, my Nagel? What up, my Nagel? What up, my, my, my Nagel? Talking about George R. R. Martin, not writing. Talking Marvel vs. DC, who's more exciting? Talking George Lucas's legacy, high school and centipede. Talking Giddle's new beef burrito recipe. Talking about Stephanie McMahon vs. Sable. Talking about the Cybermen vs. the Weeping English. Don't blink. The dialect's more deadly than you think. Talking Summer L, Blueberry Pale, Craft Beer, Corbin Drake's What Up, My Label. Deadpool 2 features cable. Talking Funko Pop, Celebrity Sign the Label. Talking online gaming, bitching and complaining. Talking E Rock, kissing the feet of Matt Brainin. Warner Brothers Properties, Superman's a mockery, Weird Al Conscious, Kevin Smith's debauchery, Rick and Morty Fun Zone, The Lego Build Team, Can I Have Your Attention, Possible Donkey Kong Kill Screen, What Up My Nagel, What Up My Nagel, What Up My Nagel, What Up My, My, My Nagel. Ladies and gentlemen of the universe, the next voice you hear, it's Eric Nagel. And welcome to another edition of It's Eric Nagel. That is me. To my right is Matt OG. Hello. Um, somewhere lost in the upside down is Giddles. Hopefully he'll be joining us uh, later in the program. He's wrestling a Demogorgon. And uh, Trevor had some home issues. Apparently he had a deck that collapsed. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's, that's a very clever story. But I'm throwing Trevor under the bus because he's not here to defend himself. And okay. that's the kind of guy I am. He's not here. Because he couldn't get his ass out to see to watch Thor and then oh, Infinity Avengers. War. Oh, oh right, right, and right. And he didn't want us to spoil it for him. He, he was, was like, oh, I'm going to go upstairs and sit outside for half an hour. Oh, That's why he's not such here. Such a baby. His fucking deck didn't collapse. <laughs> he, Liar. Uh, he, remember he was accusing me last week where, well, you weren't here, but I know you got a chance to listen. Last week he said, he's like, you're not going to make it to see the movie. <laughs> Something's going to happen. Well, and, you do have a track record. Well, that was for one movie. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, no, I made it out to see Avengers, and we'll go talk about that a little bit later in the program. I went to see it. He didn't see it. He didn't see the catch-up stuff to what's wrong, the headphones? Yeah, I don't hear anything. But I'm Hit that good. button. Is that what? working? No, that's weird. Still not hearing anything? Hold on. How about that? Is that working? Oh, there it is. Okay. There it is. That's weird. All right. But anyway, sorry. Technical so. glitches aside, everything's going well. So yes. Trevor won't be here. And we'll talk to him like probably next week. Maybe we'll call him and yell at him. There you, you know. go. Uh, lots been going on. Lots to do. Lots to talk about. But Matt OG was not here last week. He had a family issue to take care of. It happens time to time. But he's back here with us. What have you been up to? We haven't seen you in a while. Oh, well, it's. I mean, it's. it's been a busy... It's been busy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, 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 on the podcast front, Geek Stuff is rapidly approaching our 500th episode. That's great. Um, and, How long have you guys been doing it? Uh, almost 13 years, I think it is. And you've only point. had 500? Yeah, well, no. Uh, we have 500 numbered episodes, right? Okay. But there's a lot of episodes where... So there were weeks when we were broadcasting on XM, right? Where we would put them up as, as like part of the Saturday Night Virus, right? Right, and we would put them online as like XM show, blah blah blah, with the date, and they weren't part of our normal numbered sequence were you, show. Were you doing Marvel numbering? Yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. We never, no, we never restarted our numbering or was anything. The XM show, like the that. separate universe. It was. <laughs> no, but you know how those, you know how the XM shows work. You, you, if you, you kind of get to recycle some of that material. So we would, we would put the XM shows up online, right? And but we wouldn't number them. So there's probably, there's probably another handful of shows. Um, so from that, so what you're saying in the main, 
original universe Correct. are almost at 500. Right. And and also don't forget, well, not don't forget cuz the listeners of this show don't don't know. Although, I will say that we have a lot of crossovers. We've got more lately coming from here to Geek Stuff. Right. And a couple of them have joined uh, our Patreon, and I love all of you dearly. You're, oh, you're, that's great. You're wonderful people. But um, for those of you who don't know my own personal history and podcast history, we also were, quote unquote, off the air for almost a full year when we got robbed. Right. So we were off. We had no new episodes for almost eight months. I forgot all about that. So, right? so that kind of... <clears throat> What that story was is the, when they moved the studios over to Kev's new place Correct. at the time, somebody had broken in and went into the basement where the studio was and took all the equipment. Everything. Yeah. And then we had replaced some of it and the replacement stuff, because only us, um, got also destroyed in the flood. In the flooding. So right. we, in in, the, in a very short amount of time, we lost almost everything. We had a huge fundraiser that was Wouldn't very that successful. Have been a, sign, a sign at the time that like, maybe the universe just does not want us to do this show? Um, so we thought about it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say we didn't. We were like, maybe this is the sign. Right. But uh, in all honesty, what happened was... This is yours, by the way. Oh, thank you. Um, I have my, my, also, I have my delicious... Um, Iced coffee from Dunkin' Donuts with the peanut butter swirl, the 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 Girl Scout cookie peanut butter swirl. Oh, it's not like your YooHoo story. Oh, we could talk okay. about that later. Okay. Um, but don't feel bad because I saved one. For oh, you. huzzah! I so was you hoping that, that you would because I have bit. a criticism of your consumer review. Did you have that but, uh, and then uh, my new favorite beverage? Oh, what's this? It's carbonated Kool Aid. All right, they're making like a Kool Aid soda now. Oh, I shall be trying. Those. Yes. Um, so very quickly, um, we were going to we talked about calling it quits, and what happened was, unbeknownst to us. Um, a large group of listeners and fans at the time organized a fundraiser and then told us about it right as they were getting ready to launch it. Right. And the fundraiser raised, I would say, 90% of what we needed to come back. That's great. Um, and God, and that was that was probably eight years ago now at this point. I mean, we were only near like four or five when that happened. Um, so yeah, they raised a lot of money for us um, and that was kind of like, well, if fans and friends are raising money for us to come back, then maybe that's a side that we shouldn't throw in the towel. And so gotcha. here we are, yada, yada, years later. But yes, the numbering is off because of things like that. So you're almost at 500. Correct. Um, but for also, if you don't know, we've had Big Kev on the show time to time where we, Kev had announced not too long ago that he's moving to Hawaii. Yes, right. So that is also going on. So right um, now. he's got a, what's his. Twitter handle is it? Uh, it's uh, BK, BK, Geek, BK Geek stuff. BK yeah. Geek stuff. I'm sure he has a link up there. He's, he has a GoFundMe if you want yeah. to help him out. You can find the information there. But he's moving in a couple of weeks. Yeah. So how are you going to do 500? Is he going to have to do it from Hawaii? Uh, let's see, four weeks. Yeah, I think actually <laughs> episode 500 might be the first week he's in Hawaii. Okay. <laughs> um, but we're not giving up on the show. We're gonna just look. Just like Gittles is in the underground, right? Uh, or the upside down, rather. Every week, right? We've got a couple of things in the works that we're gonna try out. Okay. Um, uh, to make that work. So the show's not going anywhere. It's just a little, you know, a little different. But I don't think it's even gonna throw off our schedule. To be honest with you, I still suspect that the show will be released at the same time frame. So. All right. Now, what happened with the website? We were hacked. So sometime between last Thursday and Monday, and I know it had to be that time because I went on the site last Thursday to put the new episode online. Right. Um, and Monday I went on the site to check something and I noticed that the website was gone. It was it's not that it was gone. It would load. So you would put in our address, you know, bkgeekstuff.com, it would load and it would hang for a second. And then it would redirect to wow, okay. paste bin. I don't even know what the fuck paste bin is, but it's a site. And um, and I don't think paste bin was behind this. Let me tell you that. Because I don't see anything nefarious that they... I think this was more of a just... Um, I think this was like a nuisance hack. I don't think we were targeted. Right. You think I think it was just... Disrupt service. Disrupt service. That That's all it was. I think we were... You're lucky, too, that it wasn't... Because in most cases, it goes to some kind of porn site. Right. Yeah. And it did not do that. Um, I also think it must have happened on Monday because we have people that go to our site fairly regularly. Even though I don't go every day, we have listeners that go all the right. time. And that's actually how we found out about it. It was a listener hit us up on Monday and said, hey, I just tried to go and the site's down. Um, 
so the site was hacked. It's back up right now, um, but we are changing our hosting and a couple of we're going to change the entire layout of the site. Um, so it's getting a it's getting a complete refresh probably in time for five hundred. So okay, yeah, good. So it'll be good. But so the website is, but it is up and functioning. You can still go get episodes. Correct. Okay. Correct. And Correct. the episodes never went away because luckily, um, it was we use WordPress for our site. Right. WordPress is what was hacked. Our hosting provider was not hacked. So everything on the hosting site was still safe. So all our RSS feeds and all the episode files and all that stuff was safe. It was just the WordPress part of the site that was hacked, which obviously controls where you go. But so, yeah. Um, well, in that same vein, so Twitter at the day that we're taping here right. uh, put out an announcement that they also may have had a security breach. Unbelievable. And it wasn't just a portion of it. It was every single person who has a Twitter account. Which is insanity. The, which I think they said it was something like 339 million yeah. accounts or whatever. Um, on the Twitter support page, uh, their Twitter page, it says, We have recently found a bug that stored passwords unmasked in an internal log. We fixed the bug and have no indication of a breach or misuse by anyone, but as a precaution... Uh, now the wording softened because before right. they were demanding. Now it's saying, uh, consider changing your password on all services that you use this password. So if you're using the same password for your Facebook account or an email right. account and your Twitter account, they're saying anything that has that password, we don't suspect that it was malicious, but uh, you should change everything that you well, have. Well, because think about it. How many people use one password for multiple sites, right? So if you use that password, let's say just for all your social media sites, right? Right. Th there's the potential there that they can gain access to a lot of information. But. Possible. Um, I learned a long, long time ago not to do that. Everything's got its own yeah. password now, so I don't have to worry about that stuff. But uh, yeah, so the fact that it was their entire database that uh, apparently had, it's like, here's every account and every password for those accounts. Uh, oh, it's like you left it on somebody's desk. Right. It's like, I don't think anyone looked at it, so you can uh, uh, don't have to worry about it, but maybe you should consider well, changing. Well, here's the thing. In today's society... 336 million, sorry. In today's society, especially with all the data breaches and stuff like that, if they had any indication of an actual data breach, there's right. no way they would not disclose that because they opened themselves up to a lawsuit by not disclosing that information. So I, I, I'd I, like to believe that they truly didn't find any breach, but they're just being uh, abundantly cautious. Uh, it says here, the company protects user passwords via a process called hashing, which shows random characters in place of the actual passwords. But the bug that was detected stored the passwords in their original plain text on an internal log. So that's almost like, remember the old keystroke program? Yeah, of course. When people were the like... The key loggers. They would try to do it like on your school computers or um, you know any kind of uh, publicly shared computer somewhere like in the actual Windows store or something exactly. like that. So... All, what that was was anything you typed on a key on a keyboard got logged on a very basic like text uh, yeah text, text file document, for yeah. a notepad. So then you can go back and you can see where they logged in, where the password was, and and what have you. So this was sort of the same thing where everything was decrypted and listed in a note. It's like here's the password for every account. So we don't think there's a problem, but we recommend all 336 million <laughs> of you change your password to here and everything else that you have associated with it. <laughs> So that's kind of a big deal. Yeah, exactly. That, that, you know, a thing or two about a thing or two. Uh, yeah. So what happened with your weekend? So you were oh, out I and was about. busy. Yeah. So Saturday I had Geek Flea, um, which is the what is that? That's for the don't know. Um, it is a local flea market that focuses just on um, you know geek, nerd and geek related. Yeah, paraphernalia. yeah, games, toys, comics, art, um, lots of horror stuff. Uh, it's it's mostly toys. Um, genres but, that fit that world, but genres that fit that world. So that was Saturday. Um, I normally vend there. Uh, it's a good day. I had a lot of fun. The empanadas are always delicious. You clear uh, out a lot of stuff. Uh, not as much as I wanted to, but I did it. I been, did okay. I've been there at times where Matt walks in with certain products, and before it's even open, the yeah. vendors come over. Hey, can I buy this whole lot off of you, Matt? Sure. Sure. And then you look in. And it's like I thought you brought a bunch of stuff. I sold most of my table yeah. uh, before they opened. So I'm, <laughs> as soon as these are done, I'm going home. Going, that's it. <laughs> um, but it was a good day. It's always a fun time. So that was really good. 
Um, and Sunday, I went over to East Coast Comic Con. Where was that? Uh, in Secaucus, right at the Expo Center over there. Um, not far from here, yeah. Not far from here. And it was okay. Not a bad event. Not a great event. Was that the old IZOD Center? Uh, no, it is not the old IZOD Center. No, they actually have like an Expo Center. Oh, okay. They actually have like a convention like a I little convention hall. There. Oh yeah. wait, yes. Is that where they did Walker Stalker? Yes. Okay. And All they right. do like uh Heroes and Villains Fan Fest is there. Okay, I have been and, in there, yeah. Yeah. Uh that one. It's um, across from those hotels, right? Correct. Right. Um yeah, like by the Harmon Cove or whatever. Yeah. Um it was an okay event, not a great event. Um I was not there as press. Um I actually had to get a badge. Um because this particular event is very anti press, which makes no sense. Um but in that regard, I, I felt usually smaller cons are probably anti press because they know they're not going to make any money. No, see, actually, that's n- n- no, actually, that's not my experience. Usually smaller cons welcome press because they're looking for as much exposure as they can get. Hmm. Right. Like a lot of the smaller cons I go to, it's like the press form is like, you know, what's your outlet? All right. <laughs> what's your contact? All right, we'll look it over and approve you. Like it's not like you know, like San Diego, for example, right? Right. They're pretty strict with their press, uh, and obviously they have to be because everybody wants to go to San Diego. So, by the way, we will not be there, unfortunately, this year. No, we will not. This will be. Although, I mean, our badges are are still active. (laughs) I'm just saying, if we wanted to fly, um, but no, we are not going to San Diego this year. But um, so yeah, so this this particular event, not only are they anti press, but they're assholes. I mean, if I'm going to be. You know, if I'm speaking out of turn, okay. Um, their 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 position is like, well, if you're not Fox, uh, coming to visit our shitty con in Secaucus, right. we don't want you. Like that's kind of their stance. Um, but I wanted to be able to go and just check it out and be able to talk about it and whatnot. Um, I had fun. I saw a lot of people there. I always get to see a lot of friends. Um, some geek stuff fans came and hang out with us all day, and what we walked around together as a group. So that was nice. Um. But yeah, it was you know it was an okay show. Um, I don't know that I'd go back, but maybe it depends on who the who the guest lists are. Was it just people selling stuff? Was was that the majority of it? Just no, vendors? No, there was. I mean, there was some talent there. Some of the artists were fantastic. Like Artist Alley had some really great independent artists. Some really like old school artists who you don't see very often. So that was really good. I mean. Not that these names mean anything to you, but guys like Howard Chaikin were there, and um, uh, there was another. Uh, Mike Zeck was there. Like these are iconic old Marvel and DC artists. That was great. Jim Starlin was there. Now the significance of Jim Starlin is that he created, or essentially created, and wrote Thanos, the original in the in the Marvel comics. So mm-hmm. this weekend, having Jim Starlin at an event, his line was down the convention center. And like out the door, like his line was super long because Infinity War was, you know, right. this week and Thanos is on everybody's mind. Um, but it was an OK event. I mean, I, I don't regret going. I don't know if I'd go again, but we'll see. It was fun. Well, glad you had a good time. Yeah. Um, I don't remember what I did. It's so hard nowadays. You'd think with my lighter schedule, I would remember everything <laughs> going. Now it's just like I don't even remember yesterday. Days blend. Is it's, it Friday? <laughs> is it Tuesday? I have no idea. Um. <laughs> Well, theoretically, you can assume today is Thursday unless I'm really just fucking with you. <laughs> <laughs> is it? I don't know. It's like I can't focus. I just My head showed hurts. up. Yeah, it's Thursday. Sure. Um, yeah, I went and saw Avengers on Saturday. We'll get into that in just a moment. And Yeah, we should uh, talk about that. Oh, well, nothing really else of, of excitement has happened that's, other than work-related stuff. But that's but okay. Like, downtime is good sometimes. Sometimes. You, you it's it's horrible for radio discussion. I mean, uh, you always like having some kind of fallout or, or uh, something that happened to me that uh, grinds my gears. <laughs> Well, maybe it's it's your turn to have a uh, have a have an un. Maybe this is the week that week. I'm not here, and it's you three doing the show. <laughs> that, that, that's it. That's all. Except Rotating that he's head. not here, and Giddles isn't here yet either. I'll just so right leave now you to your own and devices, and I'll go play stores. Red Dead. That's it. Go ahead. Um, well, we did. Uh, I did some new updates for the consumer, which are up on uh, the consumer on Instagram, uh, our Facebook page, Twitter, etc. Let, let's talk about one of those. Okay. Let's talk about this one. That would be the brand new drink from Yoohoo, the right. chocolate peanut butter. Right. Okay. So I read your consumer review. Okay. 
Um, I don't know. Are you going to reiterate it? Are you going to paraphrase um, it for people? I, you didn't I can like as, it. I can. I can as we go. You, you, you didn't like it. Is is the over? Is the I overall. wanted to, but I did not. You're right. correct. So the part that I take uh, umbrance with was it me throwing it against the wall like a paintball? No, that was hilarious. Okay. No, I enjoyed that part. <laughs> it it makes me want to have you who paintball matches. But no, the part the part that I took umbrance with is when you uh, particularly said, you know. Chocolate and peanut butter always works normally. And, you know, it's a combination that that seldom fails. Yeah. And all I can think is I've talked about at least two or three times in this particular basement right. how terrible funny bones are. Right. <laughs> and the Twinkie version. Right. And now the other ones that I tried, they're all terrible. They are. So that you could just add this to the list of peanut butter chocolate fails. Okay. It doesn't always... It, it, in my opinion, now it more oftentimes sucks. Okay. Well, you can feel to amend that review. You can add on to it and say, please note our <laughs> continuous discussions of Funny Bones, uh, Chocolate Peanut Butter Twinkie, and I forgot the I other forget one. I forgot the other third one. But yeah. um, no, here's the thing. And we've uh, talked about Yoohoo for- I'm going to try this, by the way. Please do. We've talked about Yoohoo for a while where people either love or hate Yoohoo. And I love Yoohoo. It's a ve- it is a very polarizing beverage yeah. because people either love or hate it. Now, I, I don't mind y- regular Yoohoo so much but i'd rather have chocolate milk because it just tastes better than yoohoo matt's tasting it right now what do you think i don't hate it right i like it better than funny bones i'll give you that (laughs) i don't hate it right um but i don't really taste the peanut butter it kind of just tastes like i don't know different chocolate I thought you like would, Hershey's versus I, America's Choice. As you know in the I mean? review, it, it's it was like you were tasting two different yeah. flavors at the same time, but they were separating. Nothing was mixing together. You know, like it tastes a little almost burnt, almost bitter, but that's the peanut butterish part of it. Yeah, the peanut butter is almost an aftertaste. Yeah, so you're tasting the chocolate first, and then the peanut butter, yeah. whatever the peanut butter is, uh, hits you at the end. It's just I I don't enjoy it. I thought it would be a better thing. Now, we've also, you know what, since you said the funny bones, we've also talked about Butterfinger not being a great, but Butterfinger technically isn't peanut butter. Right. So it doesn't necessarily fall into that. Do you not that. like Butterfinger? Not, I'm not really a big oh, Butterfinger I like, fan. I like Butterfinger. I'd rather have Reese's or something than if I'm if going to have a chocolate peanut butter kind of thing. Now, I have to know now, are you constantly in some sort of moral peril? When you talk about Butterfinger, because it is a Simpsons product. Well, that I'm not <laughs> married to them. But. Well, I mean, you know, I assumed you were. No, but I mean, look, if it wasn't for the Simpsons, Butterfinger would have been dead a long time ago. <laughs> and even they have admitted that. Um, but no, I, I, Butterfinger's okay, but it's just kind of, it's almost like a brittle Charleston chew at that point, it, right? Well, it's it's, it's definitely... not really peanut buttery like you would, if you bit into a, a Reese's peanut butter cup, you're tasting an enormous amount of peanut butter. Right. If you're eating Reese's Pieces, it's a lot of peanut butter. It's artificial peanut butter flavoring. Right. Um, but it's just, I never got into Butterfinger. I just thought it was a weak product. Okay. I'd rather have something that was pure um, peanut butter. Okay. If, if, if at all possible. Fair enough. So I don't, I don't hate Butterfinger, but I don't also, I've never had a Butterfinger right. in an attempt to replace a peanut butter cup. Like, I have a Butterfinger because I'm in the mood for a Butterfinger. See, I'm not never because in the I'm, mood for that. Not because I'm in the mood for if I'm in chocolate a, peanut butter. If I'm butter. in a store and I see that, yeah. then I'm just going to, like, I'll rather find a peanut butter cup. Right. Even the Russell Stouffer's peanut butter cups. I'll rather have one of those than a, than a Butterfinger. Given the perfect ideal circumstances, I would sacrifice a peanut butter cup for a peanut butter Twix. See, I don't like Twix either. Oh, the chocolate peanut butter Twix is delicious. Giddles is joining us. Wait, we're not hearing. Oh, no, we don't hear them. Are you talking about those like bullshit Butterfinger peanut butter cup things? We're t- no, those we were, are kind of weak. We were They're t- terrible. <laughs> we were discussing Matt just tried the uh, the Yoohoo peanut butter drink for the first time. Ugh, that sounds horrible. Yeah, it's not that good. Um, but I just brought home a pint of chocolate fudge ice cream with peanut butter and pretzels in it. See, that sounds amazing. Right? I would eat that. Yeah. And white, and white chocolate raspberry. I got some good ones. Actually, I would uh, eat that more than the peanut butter one. A white chocolate raspberry. I'm 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 particular about raspberry. I like white chocolate raspberry. I like white cheesecake chocolate raspberry. Cheesecake Factory has a white chocolate raspberry cheesecake that's actually very good. Yes, but sometimes white chocolate raspberry tastes like white chocolate Robitussin. No, well, this is like 
we do like the white chocolate and then we just do like a swirl of like raspberry jam in the middle. It's pretty yeah, no, good. That's that sounds delicious. But that yeah, sounds like not, real raspberry too. So Yeah, it is. Like we like make the jam ourselves like yeah. in-house from raspberries and we melt the chocolate in-house to like make the white chocolate. So it's very from scratch. Yes, yeah, see now that sounds delicious. It's not like that TCBY bullshit where it's just like, <laughs> I don't know what this is. That's not like that ice milk. It's not white ice chocolate cream. mousse. Yeah, it was oh. almost that stuff that they used to make plaster craft. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you're lucky. Um, so, would you drink that? Would you give that to your kid? You think your kid would like that? Um, so I have a child who is uh, similar to you, and that traditionally speaking, he does not like chocolate. Wow. Okay. Um, okay. He... I have some friends who don't like chocolate. He's not opposed to it. He will eat chocolate sometimes, but given like given an ice cream choice, right. he's vanilla and vanilla based ice cream. Yeah, that would be me. Given a cake or a cupcake choice, he is vanilla. Icing, okay. vanilla icing. Right. He, he, it's not like he's like morally opposed to chocolate, but he prefers vanilla. For ice cream, I'm a vanilla guy, hands down. I would rather have a vanilla or a variation on vanilla any day of the week than chocolate right and here's the thing i'll tell you this too because we have lots of people uh like who are chocolate addicts who yeah. just do not like chocolate ice cream yeah. like even the like people i work with like my this one guy jose like he's like our porter and he's just like i love chocolate but i don't like chocolate ice cream it tastes chalky like he just doesn't like the flavor like it's just it's just a weird different thing like i don't really like chocolate that much but i like chocolate ice cream so, so there I guess you it kind of works out yeah so i probably would not give this to my kid because my kid also just doesn't like chocolate milk right like, he doesn't? No. Wow. He drinks regular milk or he drinks he drinks the milk with the coffee syrup in it. Really? Coffee yeah. syrup? What is yeah. that? So so it's it's making a comeback in the last probably like six or seven years that I've seen regularly. But you know, oldie time and like oldie time malt shops, you could get you could get it, it was like um almost like a milkshake or um but they were coffee flavors not made with actual coffee and they sell okay. it now it's just like chocolate syrup except it is coffee flavored but it's not bitter it's it's like sweet so like international delights kind of but for chocolate or like caramel yeah, like i'm confused it, it kind of tastes it kind of tastes like chocolate ice cream uh not chocolate ice cream coffee ice cream okay but it's not made with actual coffee interesting so when he was younger, that's amazing because kids don't like coffee at all. Because it, but this doesn't taste like regular bitter coffee. It tastes coffee ice cream doesn't taste really like coffee either. I love coffee ice cream. It doesn't taste like coffee though, and I love coffee. But years ago, when my you know years ago, he's not that old. But when he was <laughs> younger, um, I would have coffee in the morning all the time. I still do, and uh, he always was like, Dad, you know. Can I have coffee with you? And I'm coffee like, right now. Yeah, I'm not. All right, I have some too. I'm like, I'm not going to give you coffee. You're like three. <laughs> like it'll stunt your growth. You're short enough. It's like I can't get you to bed as it is. Yeah. So, um, so I I found the coffee syrup and I looked it up and it's got no more caffeine in it than chocolate and and it's not actual coffee like I said. Um, and so I started giving that to him because that was like we would have coffee together in the morning. Right, that was like our thing, you know. And now okay. he, he likes it. And, and Stella Dora breadsticks. Yeah, you, can, <laughs> you can buy it on like uh, Shoprite has it, but but we go through enough of it in my house where I buy it in bulk from Amazon. Wow, <laughs> I got like four or five bottles at a time for cheap. Now I want to hear wanna that. Try, bit. I want to try this now. I it's wanna... good. <clears throat> Next time I know you're gonna be here, I will yeah, bring, bring some. It. Yeah, I'll bring yeah, some. Please, because I like that's something that I would like try and experiment with and like turn it into different things like pies and stuff. And, Hell, like, I'll just send you a and... bottle. I think I got four or five at home. I'll Ooh, just send I'll... you one. Yeah, do it. <laughs> uh, if you haven't noticed, Gittles has his new setup now. Yeah. Some of the money that we raised off the uh, the auctions. That mic looks and sounds nice. Got, uh, bought him some new equipment. For it's his just studio. as big as my head as it looks. Like, <laughs> it's a shot here. It does look like you could swaddle that mic and put it to bed at night. He's got new headphones, he's got a new microphone, new camera, new everything. Everything, new so. apartment, right? Yeah. Well, room. we didn't pay for that, but <laughs> no. But I mean, it's you know, it's everything is everything new. It's nice. We made well, enough. It's if, everything is coming up. If we <laughs> made enough Gittles. money off those auctions to pay for Gittles' new apartment, we'd still be having more auctions. <laughs> That's, auctions would still be <laughs> yeah. ongoing. I still need to pay off my car, so let's try and get that done. 
Yeah. Uh, so, all right. So you tried the Yuhu. Do you want to try the other product? Yes, I, I will try. On? I will try the other product. But I think we should move on. And no, I will we will. But I want to hear what you see, right. see about this. This is uh, also on the consumer for the reviews. Kool Aid put out a brand new thing called Sparklers. It's in grape. It's in tropical punch, and I believe there's a cherry that's coming. I haven't seen it on the shelf oh, yet, seen but, those, I heard, but I haven't tried. Them. I've heard that it's it's coming out. What this is, it's a carbonated version of Kool Aid. All right, so, so it it's doesn't soda? it it doesn't feel overly carbonated. So it's slightly carbonated, I would say. Right. Um, it tastes kind of like grape juice. Um, and uh, it's not bad. I would drink that. I mean, I I don't know that it's like my go-to, but I don't hate it. I like it better than the Yoohoo. If, you know. How much sugar is in that one can? Well, I it's, bet it's like 45 grams. Well, it says 50% less sugar than leading regular sodas. Uh, let's see. It says Sugars. 11. 11 grams. Okay. For one but how, can. How big is the ounce? Or can, how many uh, ounces is it's the can? It's tiny. Have? It's 7.5 fluid ounces. Okay. So, so a can like of a... soda is what? 16 fluid ounces, right? 12. Oh, is it 12? Okay. Yeah. So, so even, even, even compared to a can of soda, a full can of soda, it would still probably be less than a full can of soda. Okay. Right? Because isn't a can of soda like 38 or whatever, depending on what now, it is? We're drinking them now and they're, they're room temperature. Yeah. I had them when I first tried it. I put them in the fridge yeah. for a long time. When they're super cold, I bet they're, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's not bad. I mean, I would drink. Like I said, I would, I'd rather this than some of the other crap we've had on this show. Well, you, you, I spared you the Red's Wicked Watermelon. Ugh. Ooh. Because no. uh, drink, I drink Red's Wicked uh Ale and yeah, yeah. The, the apple one, and it's very good. Their black cherry one is one of my favorite drinks yeah. of all time. Uh, the mango didn't care for, but the watermelon, disgusting. It tastes like somebody just dumped watermelon pucker into there, oh. and maybe a hint of cider, or maybe not even ciders. Maybe that somebody just poured watermelon pucker into the can and said it's red, uh, red, uh, yeah. wicked right. apple. And you drink watermelon's it. a weird, a hard flavor to like well, the extract and like it's like how you get grape flavored things, but it doesn't taste like a grape. You know yeah, what I mean? It's like good it's good when different. it's fermented with beer. Well, I was going to well, say, I think the problem is the mix, the mixing with the cider because the hell are high water, which is watermelon also. Right. That that's really good, and it tastes but like actual watermelon. With the, it's fermented right. with the water with from watermelon yeah, yeah, yeah. to make that flavor. Right. They're not injecting watermelon as a as a second flavoring yeah. into it it's no. actually brewed in the process where other places are it's like putting the watermelon jelly rancher into a zima right you know? and here's here's the other thing so ciders tend to be a little bit more bubbly on the tongue than beers do at least in oh, my definitely. experience right and i've had it's a lot more, of ciders. it's more of like a champagne kind of tingle like right. it's a stronger bubble and i'm sure that that's makes any sense. i'm sure that's from the apples i'm sure that's yeah. for, so that's what that that's coming from so Watermelon, in case you've never had this unfortunate experience, I have had this unfortunate experience. When watermelon starts to turn, like if you have watermelon in your fridge, it when it starts mushy. to turn, yeah. not, not, not even the mushy, the, not the texture, but when you taste it, it kind of bubbles on your tongue. Well, you it, know what it is? It's because the way the, the, the fibers break, break down, down. It's like a really horrible mouthfeel. Like, right. It's just like, it's like a wet cracker. It's like, nuh, nuh, yeah. nuh, so, gross. So, all I can imagine is a watermelon cider would taste like a watermelon that's starting to turn. Ugh. And I'm instantly turned off by it. No, this was completely oversweetened artificial. Okay. Yeah. So you know what the puckers are, right? Yeah, the, absolutely. Yeah, when the girl at yeah. bars girls get those shots and yeah, yeah. yeah. It just picture that whole bottle and that's what you're drinking. Yeah, puckers are okay after you've already had three or four things to drink and you can no longer taste anything. Right. But yeah, yeah you don't want to have it all night long. No, yeah. not at all. Or if you lost the bet. So. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you missed yeah. out on that, but uh, at least you've caught up with a few of those things there. We have some extras if you want to bring them home to your son. If yeah, not, maybe. we'll just Yeah, I'll try them. We'll uh paint them. them. We'll give them to the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give them to the neighbors. They're always good to us. Before we get into Avengers, do you want to do Cobra Kai? Yeah, let's do, talk about Cobra Kai. We can Kai, talk about Cobra Kai. Thing. Cobra Kai, we, we've talked about it not too long on this program, where it was sort of the continuation of the original Karate Kid line. So yep. there was three movies with Ralph Macchio, right? Correct. And Pat, Mor uh, Pat Morita. Mm -hmm. Then they did a new Karate Kid with Hillary Swank. Hillary Swank. And then they redid it with Will Smith's kid. Oh, and, they made the re and Jackie Chan. Yeah. <laughs> But Ugh. let's just say the three original movies from the 80s. Right. This is continuing down the line as time has gone by with uh, Billy, um, what's his, oh, I forgot his real name. But he's yeah. Johnny in, he's in Johnny. the original Karate Kid. It follows his life and, right. and the disaster that he's become. 
and also contrast to Daniel's life, who is sort of a low... He, you want to say he's a big shot, but he's really a local loser, but he's a local celebrity who's running a car um, dealership. It, not entirely, though. No? No, that that's... Because that's the gist I got from the trailer. That's Yeah, that's played out a little bit. I mean, yeah, but... All right, so I've watched the first five episodes. So I have to pay to watch this. No, so okay, good. so here let me let me let's get all this out of the way. It's th- thank you, Gittles, for bringing that up. The first two episodes are online for free, no matter what. Go on YouTube, you can watch the first two episodes. The rest of the episodes are available through YouTube Red. There are ten yeah. episodes in the first season. YouTube Red offers a thirty day free trial. And each episode is like 22 minutes or 25 minutes. So you can easily, you could watch all 10 episodes in like two days and then cancel your YouTube Red trial and be fine. That's what I do with Amazon Prime. (laughs) Like numerous times. Like, oh, a 30 day free trial. So better order what I need. Right. So theoretically, you could watch it all for free. I have watched okay. the first five episodes, and I, I started the six, but I, I, I'll have to restart it tomorrow because I ran out of time. I'm but, wondering if I can watch it because I watch YouTube stuff through my Apple TV. Yeah, I'm wondering if I can do red through the Apple TV. You can as long as you're you can as long as you're logged into your YouTube account. Oh, so I can just watch it on television. Correct. All right. Yeah. Great. I watched it on my computer today because I was at work, but mm-hmm. but um, so it's really good. It's really good. And when we first watched the trailers, the impression that we got was like. You know, Johnny was kind of the good guy, and Daniel might have been the bad guy. Johnny is so still not a good guy. Like, he is an awful person, at least in the first couple of episodes. Okay, because, like, the trailer made it very sympathetic to him. Like, he was just, like, like, he got his ass kicked, and he was just, like, down on his luck. And, like, the whole, like, they went the full, like, fan theory of Daniel LaRusso being the bad guy in the trailer. Right, so, but, so here's the thing. He, he is down on his luck. He does get his ass kicked. All of that is true. But at the same time, he's making jokes about, like, illegals and, like, oh, no. and like you know, like, you know, women shouldn't be in karate. Like, so he's he's still very much Johnny. Okay. Okay. He's stuck in the 80s. Like, the soundtrack <laughs> is still very, like, Guns N' Roses and Rat, especially his part of the show. He's still very much stuck where he was which makes which makes Thanks, sense it makes sense his character he is stunted as a person as a result of what happened oh, he's, he's like the Al Bundy luck. of karate right he never got over the fact that he lost he's never been able to really be successful at anything so so that part is accurate but he starts up the cobra kai again to help a bunch of kids that are getting bullied which is the okay. exact opposite of what Johnny would do. So he's kind of walking this weird line where you really you're rooting for him and everything that he's doing because he's helping a bunch of kids who are down on their luck, who are nerds, who are outcasts, beat the shit out of the actual bullies on the show. Okay. So that's Johnny's part of the story. That, Dan- yeah, I, I definitely got that right. from the trailer. Like, I definitely got that part from the trailer. So Daniel's part of the story is, yes, he is sort of a local ce- celebrity and that he has a car dealership. But you get the sense that he has done buku good for himself. He's got a beautiful house with a huge pool, nice cars, a beautiful wife, two kids. He belongs to some, like, exclusive club. But he's still very much – he's grounded – Right, he's grounded. Who's his wife? Is she one of the girlfriends from the earlier no, Karate Kid no, movies? Or no, no, okay. she's new. He's okay. grounded, but he has those moments of being kind of like douchey. But those he gets through those douchey moments like in the first two episodes. Okay, the rest of it, it's like it's like okay, yeah, this is kind of like Daniel. Like he got luck. He's playing his cards. He's doing it right for his family. He cares about his family. Him and Johnny still have this weird rivalry going on. But what you sort of what you realize as the show is starting to develop is that they're really on the same side, but it's like the opposite side. You know, and it's like two sides of the same coin. Yeah, yeah. Like Daniel is still very much like anti-bully, anti-shitheads, and Johnny is sort of walking that road also, but Daniel is so fixated on stopping Johnny because the Cobra Kai's are terrible, obviously, and Johnny is like, well, yeah, but these kids can't get beat up. But it's... It's really well written. It does a really okay. good it does a really good job at bringing those characters into the now, 
It makes sense where they are. It's not a cut and dry morality story. It is it's, not cut and dry. You got to give and take based on the situ- uh, scenarios. Okay. And um, I suspect that by the time it plays out, they will not be friends, but they will find some sort of common enemy, common enemy or balance. That's, okay. That's the vibe that I'm getting. Again, I'm only about halfway through. But it's the Brazilian jiu-jitsu place yeah. that moved in down the street. Exactly. Yeah. But you should blue belt. Yeah, they're just, they're the just like throwing people. Like, dude, we can't fight this guy. He's throwing people. That's I, I, not in the rules. I think you should watch it. It's an easy watch. It's like 25, 26 minutes an episode. You could blow through them. It's there's how so, many episodes? Ten. Ten. Okay. So it's five hours. I mean, it's it's pretty. There's some pretty funny parts. The music is pretty good. The acting is really good. Is there um, anyone else from the original movie that's in it? Are like any of Johnny's friends in it? Is this no. the guy who says sweep the leg in it and he has like a broom store or some shit? Like, no, not not yet at least. Did they explain okay. what happened to Miyagi? Yeah, he okay. died. So, or is that a spoiler? Should we just leave that alone? No, no, I don't think it's a spoiler, but I mean, he, they address the fact that he's passed. Oh, right? they didn't do the fake but, one-sided phone no, call? No. Hi, Mr. Miyagi, how are no, you? And, I'm and, doing great. And Mr. Pause, pause, pause. Afterlife, you say? <laughs> yeah. No, and but Miyagi still Miyagi still sort of plays a role on the show in okay. a very sort of Yoda way. I was just going to say, like, is he like a Yoda type character where it's just like whenever you're, he's like down, he just like channels the inner yeah, Miyagi. And he goes to like, I don't think this is a spoiler. He goes to like the grave site, you know, and like he like digs him up. No, no, we don't fucking dig him up. No, Jesus. but like you know, he goes to the tombstone. Like people would pray, you know, on a tombstone, or like you know, like in the movies you see like some guy's dad passed away, right. and he's like, "Dad, I wish you were still here," like that kind of stuff. But it's not like we being shit. But I will it's say, my cake. I will say, episode four of the series is is really a tribute to Pat Morita. Uh, okay, that's and, cool, and it's very well done. And it's not hokey, and it's not cheesy, and it fits nicely into the narrative of the story. So they didn't just do it because, like, oh shit, we got to figure out Miyagi. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it's does, well thought out. Does Daniel still have the car that Mister Miyagi gave him? Like, is it like in his dealership as like an honorary thing? Like, that's what I wanted. Like, that car was kind of awesome. No, I don't, at least the, he hasn't gotten. What there was yet. the move? Was it used cars where they had? The one of the the bandit yeah. they had <laughs> on the stilts thing there was that the movie I think so yeah but yeah. you know like Johnny has his original gi still and Danny had Daniel has the headband and his original gi and like so they're like there's enough in there to like have fun with and be like ah oh, that's a little hokey but in an okay way but the story is really good they found a really good way to not make it cheesy. What about Johnny's karate teacher? Does he ever show up or is he, is he ever mentioned? No, because if if you remember, I think by the time... Who had a nice tuft of hair. Well, because yeah. I remember in like Karate Kid 2 and it, like, it starts off and it like, takes place right after he's like punching through the windows or whatever. Right, and he, he puts, like, all upset. He puts Johnny in a chokehold and shit like that. And yeah, so, yeah. actually, one of the things they play on, Daniel is talking to Johnny in a couple of the scenes and he's like, you know, I can't believe you would want to walk down this path again after what you went through and you know what the Cobra Kai stands for and you know how it can devolve and like, why would you want to do this? And then the sense you get from Johnny is, well, this is all Johnny knows. Yeah. Like, and and they, they have some flashbacks for when Johnny's a kid. Right. And you get the sense that this is all he knows. Like, I, I don't know that they said it yet, although I suspect, like, I don't think he actually had a father figure growing up and so i think that sensei filled that it gap seems for him that way. Yeah. and so Do you think at one point his Daniel- relationship with the sensei was very abusive obviously no but like didn't he have like that that whole um in karate kid one like that whole like gala with like his family and stuff like that and they were all very wealthy johnny? with johnny i don't know maybe was that johnny or his girlfriend remember they go to like the really fancy dinner no, and then like I've- danny shows up and like ruins it no i think that was the girlfriend that was elizabeth shoes Family, that was her I family. Think, I think okay. so. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go back and rewatch these movies too. But um, I don't know. I definitely think the series is worth watching. At least, okay. I at least I'm halfway like, through. I... But it's pretty good. It's really well written. I'm surprised. Because here's the thing: like, I saw the trailer and I was like, okay, like kind of cheesy throwback. But now that you're like giving it some good reviews, say it's better than the trailer. Like, I'm gonna watch it. At yeah. least the first two that are free. Yeah, it's and like, well, really, theoretically, they're all free. 
But well, yeah. <laughs> but you just get the free trial. But it's worth it. It's a good story. Well, Matt, you just set my weekend because I have the three original movies. Nice. I will watch those back to back to back, and then I will take a dive into Cobra Kai on YouTube Red. I mean, honestly, you probably only have to watch like the first One. movie and like the opening sequence of movie two. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, he he references going to Okinawa like once or twice. Does he have a little drum thing that they were spinning? <laughs> not not yet. <laughs> but like, like he references Okinawa like once or twice, but like you probably can on the car away. lot. Is he doing shadow moves against the wacky waveable guy yeah, that, to yeah. bring him in? The the opening of the very first episode is the final fight of the oh, first really? movie. Like they they, okay. they just show the original footage, right? And it makes sense because it really does set the stage for these two guys and, and how they evolve. And this is clearly more Johnny's story than I think Daniel's story, but it's very much concurrent. So, okay. so check it out. I think it's good. All right. Well, I will definitely be doing that. It seems like Giddles will be as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, I was a big Karate Kid fan growing up. I mean, who wasn't? Who didn't who walk wasn't? around doing the crane kick? You know what I mean? We like all did all the crane the kick. Yeah. Well, Every I time. hated like, the one song from. You're the best. No, that oh, one I loved. I hated the other one. That I am the man who will fight. Which one? For that was from, that was the honor. second one. Though, wasn't that was it? the third one. I think. That was the third I one. I am yeah. the. But that was on radio th- all the time, yeah. and I hated that song. It's a great song. It comes on the '80s channel at work all the time, and we all sing it, and we all like we're te- we all reenact Karate Kid and yeah. like, we love. each other. It's great. The, and then, it, then it was worse song. when uh, Newfound Glory made a cover of it. Yeah, yeah. And I said, "Wow, this is wow, really this just is, you know ooh, X the bed." Newfound. So, yeah, I, I, do I don't want to ruin anything for you guys, so maybe we can revisit it after you have a chance to watch. Because there's some really funny things that I think okay. will just be funnier after you see them yourself, rather than me tell you them. But all right, totally well, down. When we come back, uh, we'll do some movie highlights, some TV highlights, and we'll talk about Avengers. Take Surprise a break. We'll blow. be right back. It's Eric Nagel with Eric Matt and Giddles. Back right after this. Attention, shameless social media plug. Derek Nagel is on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and reluctantly, Snapchat. So follow, like, and subscribe. Would you kindly? We are back with more. It's Eric Nagel. Welcome back to It's Eric Nagel. That is me, Matt OG, to my right over there. Hey. And Giddles in the Upside Down joining us. <laughs> what up? Hi. Uh, lots going on. We got to get to Avengers in just a moment here, but of course, as we always do, looking at the box office, uh, I think Avengers came in at number one, right? Yeah. I- didn't it do well? The most, the most frustrating part about Avengers for me this past week is that it didn't open in China the same day it opened everywhere else because it would have made... A billion dollars for the opening weekend, and 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 it's opening weekend. If it had opened in China, it did or, not, or or not maybe not in its opening weekend, but within the first like three or four days. Well, instead, it had to settle for eight hundred million dollars. Yeah, it's at eight hundred million dollars uh, after about both a week. domestic and international Correct. grosses in there within four days. Eight hundred million dollars. It opens in China on the eleventh. Why was oh, it man. delayed? Everything. Why do you know? I really um, thought this was like Rampage's week too. Like I thought they yeah. were gonna do it. Like, yeah, you think this is it? Um, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I I don't know. I think I think because they go through a more stringent um, uh, check, like they don't release as much over there, and Marvel doesn't have as Marvel is a pretty big following over there, but it's not as big, I think, as over here. Well, they had to they had to change the. I remember they couldn't call them Captain America. Yeah, they yeah. had to change it to something else Captain in order to something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ridiculous over Kept there. Kept in front of me. Yeah. <laughs> but it's uh, $800 million for its opening weekend. Yeah. Number two, still holding strong, A Quiet Place. Yep. Doing very well. Uh, only down from, <laughs> you know, being number one the week before. Right. Um, I Feel Pretty, number three, still holding at number three because it yeah. debuted at number three. That was the Amy Schumer movie. Number four, Rampage, still doing well. And number five, actually up from eighth place, Black Panther. Yeah. So having wow. Avengers uh, opening up here actually helped Black Panther, they're keeping it in the theaters longer, I read. Uh, it's amazing that it's... I mean, I'm a, I'm super happy, but it's amazing that it's still in the top 10. Right. That's great for them. Uh, low, yeah. No, domestically, it's made... I don't have the domestics, but yeah. it's almost at $700 million. 
with the foreign box office in there, it's one point three five billion. I was going to say it's well in well in excess of a billion. Yeah. So all those people who are saying with the superhero James Cameron, yeah. who are saying it's like, look, I like those movies, but there's other stories to tell. Okay, well, you're working on the same four stories for the last five years that yeah. haven't come out, and, and you're uh, about to reboot Terminator again, again. So, yeah. and sorry, uh, Cameron. Based on that, almost every movie that they've had has reached six hundred million to over a billion dollars. Yeah. They're not going to stop anytime soon because one, they do them very well. Two, people still like them, and as long as each one of them is now going to be breaking a billion dollars, guess what? Superhero movies for the foreseeable future. I also, and I've made this argument before, but I will reiterate it again. Yeah, I don't consider the Marvel superhero movies, the Disney Marvel superhero movies, right, to just be superhero movies. I think that they are movies that They're fall within movies. other. No, they they fall within other genres in general and happen to contain superheroes like winter soldier was absolutely an espionage type film absolutely correct and yeah. it just happened to have that. captain america i think it's lazy to just simply say this is a superhero movie because i i think they all fall in different some of them are action some of them are you know you know comedy some of them are espionage so i think they fall and they walk in and out of different movie genres, but that's neither here nor there. A billion people saw Avengers, <laughs> or however many people saw it. the. Uh, it's also is that's about how many people died in it, right? Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> more than that. But it's also lazy <laughs> too when you see people on social media when they're saying, "I can't believe grown adults are still going to see these movies. I don't get it. These are stupid. I've never seen them. I never will. I don't like any of them. They're all this." I've seen people saying that they're all it's all the same thing in every movie. But I'm like, really, but, it's not. But grown adults go and see horror movies. Grown adults go and see Pixar movies. Right. Gro like movies are grown movies. adults argue with people on Twitter all day. So yeah, it's like, exactly. <laughs> right. Like right. Exactly. There's a grown adult in theory in the White House. Like that's really yeah. we're not holding <laughs> fucking we're not really holding up high standards here for adults. So. Yeah. <laughs> like I like it, it, er, not too long. Here's ago. A, here's what I'll say. Like. For me, when I say that, like, to me, they're all the same is that every time I watch one, I know how it's going to end from how it begins. Like, I haven't, like, really been surprised other than Civil War. Like, when it ended, I was like, oh, I thought there was going to be at least another 30 minutes. Yeah. And, like, it ended. But everything else, it, it's they felt very formulaic where it's like introduce a villain, but there's going to be some sort of trouble. People are going to disband. And then by the end, they're going to come together and like defeat the villain who will be back in like another movie. It's kind of like how um, old Broadway shows are where it's like, yeah, they're all different stories, but it's always like guy likes girl girls, not in like league with guy. They get together, they sing and then they don't, they're, but you know what I mean? Like they're very similar. I kind of feel like, Somebody's watching you. Yeah, it's creepy. No, uh, me. I kind of feel like most movies are like that. Though. Oh yeah, they they are. Right. Yeah. I mean, every action movie is essentially the same story. Right? Yeah. Good guy, bad guy. Good guy beats bad guy. One hundred percent. I mean, it's like, you know what I mean. There's like conflict. I said, we, we go to, there's we go to a the divorce. movies for the escape. Of course. The escape is the good guys winning for a change. Right. right. Which is <laughs> why some people don't like Infinity War. Well. <laughs> Yeah. It's just amazing when you see, look, not everything is for everybody. And I get that. And I'm not saying anybody says, I don't like comic book movies. I don't jump down their throat no. because they don't. Some people don't. Right. So, but when more people than not are willing to give this genre a chance or these kind of movies a chance and they wind up liking it for saying it's an entertaining movie. Sure. I don't follow the I'm not going to go read the comics still. I'm right. not, I don't follow a lot of the stories, but I watch the movies. I like that. There's something to them. And the fact that they're all making the money they are, it's not just people blindly being well, led because somebody threw the uh, Avengers or the Marvel logo on if it. You, if you like, I don't know, for example, Fast and the Furious 37. Right. Like, if you like that movie, there's no reason why you couldn't like a Marvel movie. The shit that goes on in that movie is just as ridiculous sometimes as what goes on in a superhero. No, dude. Movie. They're like, I mean, when they're racing in Antarctica and a submarine comes <laughs> through <laughs> and then like they get picked up by that happens every day. Every day. Every day. <laughs> right. Well, so <laughs> what we're saying is you should give them a chance. You yeah. know, if you don't want to go to the theater, that's fine. If it shows up on cable or on demand. You know, you may like it. You never know. Don't just the the old don't judge uh, no, a book by a cover here, kind of thing. The, here's the thing. 
don't give it a fucking chance. I honestly don't care if you never go and see a single one of these movies. Here's where I care. When you suddenly feel like you need to just bitch and moan and belittle people who care. I don't give two shits if you don't like Marvel movies or comic yeah. book movies. I don't care if you don't like action movies. I don't care if you don't like any genre of movie. That's not a problem. You're entitled to not like something. You're entitled to love something. You're entitled to all those things. The problem is when you become formulaic and bitchy about it, mm -hmm. when all you want to do is just bitch. Like, that's what it is. It comes down to all that's you want to do is complain. And and at some point in time, isn't that just tedious? Yeah. It's isn't very it just, taxing on you. Like I, it's, it's a silly distilled example but I kind of had a little Instagram rant about this the other day but some guy followed me on Instagram and blew up my feed like liked a hundred of my photos on Instagram and his, his Instagram handle was uh, I don't remember exactly but it was like Last Jedi sucks and here's why that was his Instagram handle and then everything Jeez. he posted was just like angry memes it's like what are you doing with your fucking life? Like your entire life is predicated on a two and a half hour movie that you didn't like. That's pretty fucking sad. It's right? just like, I don't I don't have that kind of energy to be offended like That's that. What I like mean. I just like it's so exhausting. Like it's I, so exhausting. I would much rather talk about stuff that I'm passionate about than dwell on something that I don't like. Unless you're passionate about not liking things. Yeah, but I think if you're passionate <laughs> about not liking it, you're either just an asshole. Or yeah. you're just doing it for clicks. Yeah. Like I, I, half the time. Or you're, or you're like super fanboy who's like, oh, in issue five two nine, when Thanos came down, yeah. he had two different colored. And you're like, but shut the fuck up. Half the time, I think those people are doing that. They don't even. That half the time, I don't even know that those people actually believe what they're saying. They're yeah, they saying just want to it talk. because they want to talk. They want yeah. to hear themselves. They want it. They want their opinion out there because they feel like they have the right to do it, and they do have the right to do it. But you know yeah. what I mean? It's just it's. They, they finally feel like it's like they're they're calling. Yeah, oh, right. I'm the expert on this one. Yeah, exactly. It's just like <laughs> ah, fucking move on with your day. But anyway, I don't want to dwell on the bad. Let's talk about the good. Let's talk about the movie. Going to warn you right now. We will be doing spoilers for Avengers as we talk about this. If you don't want to hear that, if you haven't seen the movie, just end the episode now, and we will see you next week. That being said, I went and saw the movie on Saturday, right. the noon showing, like I normally do. Not a problem. No yeah. problems. Uh, one little side note for it, though, which I, I sent you, all you guys the photo of. So remember a while back when I was having the problem with Ready Player One? Yeah. And Let's uh, just say, hold on. Let's just say the the while back when you had the problem at every single movie you've gone to, Eric. Well, I did not have a problem <laughs> with this movie. Um, I said, remember, you know, because I use the Fandango uh, account and then it prints Fandango. out your tickets. Yeah. And I take my tickets. Uh, oh, maybe it wasn't Ready Player One. It was probably Black Panther. And I see that it printed out my Avengers ticket. Yeah. I go, that's still a month and a half away. So And it printed out my ticket, so I have to hold on to it. So I held on to it where Trevor thought I was going to lose yeah. it or not go or whatever. So I get to the movie theater and I'm looking, you know, I'm walking through the parking lot. I'm looking at the ticket and I realize the ticket says Sunday. And I go, did I buy a Sunday ticket instead yeah. of Saturday? And I said, no, I'm going to go in. I had my app and, and I know it said Saturday. So why do I have a Sunday ticket? So I scan the app. Out comes my stuff. So now I have two tickets. So apparently I must have, somebody else's ticket must have printed out, left it there. And when my tickets came out, got mixed in with it. So I had two tickets to go see the movie. Nice. So uh, I did nothing with the Sunday ticket. Yeah. I went on to the Saturday show. Uh, what I did notice was I had purchased IMAX, like I do, for opening weekend, but it wasn't the 3D IMAX. Hmm. So I go, I'm walking in, and I'm like, I went back to the, the usher. I said, no glasses? Oh, no, you don't need it for this. I said, but it's IMAX. And she said, yeah, it's the 2D IMAX. I don't even know that was a thing. I didn't know that either. I thought, but I, I, go I thought in, the IMAX was But there's the IMAX screen. There. Yeah. There's everything there. But no glasses. Huh. So I'm like, do I complain? I'm looking around. I'm like, nah, you know what? I'm not going to complain. Yeah. If it's in IMAX and I can just see it like this, I'll, I'll be fine with it. And it was great. Yeah. The movie was good. Um, I didn't notice the time going by, even though it was two and a half, two forty or something like that. Yeah. Uh, never once did I think that... Uh, uh, this movie's going too long. Yeah. Like, when is it going to... Like, let's what wrap I, it up. It was the one time I thought, don't let this be the ending. Don't right, let yeah, this yeah, be the ending. Because yeah, yeah. there's been times when you watch a long movie and you go, they could have ended the movie there. They could right. have ended the movie there. At these same Return points... Return of the King. Yeah. At these same Four points, endings. I was like, don't end it here. It was like fucking Clue. Don't end it. Yeah. Is this the ending? <laughs> don't end it here. And then all of a sudden, it goes again. I'm like, oh, that yeah. wasn't the end. Yeah. Wait, is this the end? No, don't end here. And then when they show the ending, I'm like, 
that was an amazing ending. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the movie was great. I loved it. I loved it. Um, I had no problem with it. Nope. I saw that they sort of combined some stories from the comics just for the sake of telling the movie. Um, I did have a question with this, though. Thanos. Yeah. Uh, who is he? Uh, no, Thanos, um, oh, from God. what I remember from the comic books... Pretty accurate is the way he's portrayed in the movie. Yeah. Um, but he has this infatu- uh, infatuation with death. But death is also a character eventually in the Marvel Universe. In the comic book, there's books, a personification death of is, death. He's in love with death. Right. So yeah, death he, and- he, he's doing stuff to impress death. death. Okay. Yeah. Now, here's my question. So you saw Thor Ragnarok, I right? Did. Thor's sister, which didn't exist until that movie. You're right. Hela, I Hela. guess her name. She's the goddess of death. Is that the death no. that Thanos is no. infatuated with? No, no, no. She's the Asgardian goddess of death. Okay, she's not, not the, the celestial, not the royal go- goddess of death. Okay, so that's not. Yeah, can, yeah. Are they going to try to work that in, or no? I doubt it. Okay, I doubt it. I feel like if they were going to work that in, we would have seen that already. Right. Okay. I think they thought that. I think they. I think they Didn't thought we that see death in one of the movies in like an after credit scene, or that was Thanos. No, we've only seen Thanos. Okay, yeah, we never I thought, saw I death. thought there was death in one no. of them. I'm sorry. No, they've alluded another celestial. They've alluded to was uh, Eternity, which was in Guardians of the Galaxy two, where uh, where uh, Star Lord's eyes go black when he's remember he's got the electric spear yeah, yeah, yeah. from from Ego, and he goes Eternity. Like you start to see the. Which is the personification of the actual known universe in a in a I guess in a human form mm-hmm. or some kind of form, so that could still show up in the second movie. That could that could be in play. Um, the movie itself is all the different stories that we've seen in the last ten years. By the way, and I just had a, I have to correct you just because I was like, wait, that doesn't sound right. What? Uh, Hila did exist in the comic books. I thought she did. She wasn't created. But she, for the no, film. she wasn't his sister. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, I don't think she was his sister. That's correct. She right. was just the goddess of death. Okay. But, yeah, so she's his sister in the movie universe. Yes, That's yes, why yes, I was yes, asking, yes. are they combining the, the two entities? No, I don't think so. Okay. So she was her own thing, and then if yes. death does show up later on, it's going to be its own thing. Correct. Okay. So <clears throat> what this is, it's a, uh, it's, it's a nice culmination of the last 10 years of Marvel properties where back... Ten years ago, remember, they put out Iron Man. It did right. very well. They were surprised. Everyone was surprised that they let off with Iron Man. Were you surprised? I was surprised. Right? Yeah. And then they started building you know, Iron Man 2, and then they said, here's our map for the next ten years. Right. And everyone was infatuated with this map. And we, we all goofed on it of a little course. bit, too. And like, wait, this character's going to get a movie? This yeah. How is that going to work? And then as time was going on, it's like, oh, my God, good thing they did do this because it never would be as successful as it is now had they not mapped it out this way. So all those stories now finally come to a uh, to fruition with Infinity War, which is a two part movie. We saw the first part now. Second part is not until the summer of next year. May of next year. Right. It's not even the summer. Yeah. Right. before we're not going to find out who Negan killed until next May. That's right. No. And if we don't find out who Negan killed, we'd probably be better. off. No. Here's the difference. Here's the difference. Unlike with The Walking Dead, you know exactly who is killed by the end of this movie uh, because they show it. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) So everybody's dead, Dave. All the properties come together, and they worked out really well. Yeah, they each got their little introductions. Uh, and in Guardian, typical Guardian, for it was the only time they were real using real music. Yeah, yeah, uh, not music created for the orchestra uh, for the orchestral background, where you start hearing Rubber Band Man by the yeah. Spinners. I'm like, oh, Guardians are coming, yeah. and there it was. And and the way they all crossed over made sense. Yeah, it worked well. Uh, worked well. pretty well. Uh, although they they kind of I don't know what they were doing with Star Lord, like they kind of made him like he didn't have his own identity anymore because he was mimicking Thor. Then he was trying to be a badass and then he was, he lost his mind. No, I think you're, I think you're misunderstanding star Lord. Really? Yeah. Because he acted exactly as he always acts In, in, in the presence of somebody who is greater than him or who threatens his leadership. He postures. He's done it every time. Okay. He always kind of acts. Maybe I'm just noticing so, it more. So then. Thor comes in and right. starts fucking posturing like, who are you? Yeah. Right. And Rocket is loving it. Love it. He's and yeah. he's, he is needling Peter Quill nonstop. And Peter, as a response, starts talking like him. he preens a little yeah. bit. He perks up his feathers and a little starts bit. And he doing starts doing the accent yeah. and the deep voice. Yeah, exactly. Why, why are you talking so deep? I've always talked. I've always, yeah, exactly. No, you have never talked no, this deep. That's absolutely Star Lord. That's absolutely within his character. Um, so 
the the gist of the movie is this big bad Thanos uh, is finally coming to um, trying to uh, to fulfill what he believes is his destiny by getting all the Infinity Stones and putting them onto this gauntlet so he would have the ultimate power of the universe. I feel like we should have said spoiler alert at the beginning, but if you're still at this point, we're, things are about yeah, to get it's, it's things are, yeah, things are already, <laughs> things are yeah. We haven't spoiled anything too. If you read big, the description of the uh, yeah. if yeah. you read the description of the episode, there says spoilers. Yeah. So so I think you're kind of, and I don't know if you're doing this intentionally or not, but I think you're glossing over it a little bit. And I think the reason that Thanos works so well and what makes this movie so great is that you're watching it. And you actually feel for Thanos and you actually understand what he's trying to do. And the thing that makes a villain great is that they really believe in their cause and they really believe that what they're doing is right and just. And that's why I loved Killmonger so much in right. Black Panther because he was a really good villain. Right. So, so Thanos doesn't just want the stones and the glove for ultimate power. What you learn, I mean, you might know this right if you've read some of the books, but what you learn is that Thanos' homeworld, Titan, which is one of the Saturns of uh, one of the moons of Saturn, is destroyed, but it's destroyed by overpopulation. Yes. From famine, from poverty, from disease, from all Correct. those things. So he's looking to thin the universal right. herd. So what he does is he goes on this conquest where he goes to planets, right, and civilizations, and he wipes out half of the civilization. So that they can start over and and flourish. So and that they don't happen like to what happened to his Correct. Time. And he gives okay. he gives one or two examples within the context of the movie. He he flat out says, Yes, I killed half the population of that planet, but have you been back there since? Everybody is thriving. Nobody is hungry. There is no poverty. There is no sickness. It, so in his mind, he is yeah. really doing what he thinks is right. And he says that some of the hardest decisions to make require someone who is not afraid to make them. So he's okay. look, he's crazy, right? We, we we understand that genocide is a terrible thing. Mm -hmm. But in his oh, mind, you say so. In his mind, he is doing what he thinks he needs to do to save the universe from falling under the same collapse that his home world found. And so what he learns is that if he gets the infinity stones, he no longer has to go planet to planet. He can have all the stones and literally snap his fingers and wipe out half of the entire universe's population. Right. Like everyone in the entire known universe, just like every planet, like a, like 17 billion light years from here, like it'll get them too. In this yes. existing universe, yes. They talk about okay. the number of deaths would be in the trillions. It would have to be. I mean, yeah. Like, it's so, not like an astronomical number you can't right. even ca calculate. So I think what makes Thanos so great, and I think what really makes the movie so great, is that there's a couple of points in the movie where you're like, huh. <laughs> like, I get it. I don't agree with it necessarily, but I get, like, I get, you get his motivation and you feel for him. You feel for him at a couple points. Like okay. He's not what you would where most people would think of a, of a comic book villain or something where it's not like he's a power hungry guy who just wants to enslave every race and control the universe. The means like Matt said behind him is he's doing horrific stuff, but under the guise that he and, believed that he's doing the right thing. And at one point in time, I think it's Tony Stark asks him, he says, well, what do you do? What happens after you do this? After you get the stones and you wipe out half the known universe, what do you then Lord over them and rule them? And he says, no, he goes, I'm going to find a place. He's going to find, almost saying he's going to retire, yeah, sit on I'm, his porch, gonna, and, and, and watch, watch the, the sunset. Uh, sunset, yeah. That's what he says he's going to do. And okay. at the end of the movie, we're, we'll are we just jump there quickly because right. we're talking about it. At the end of the movie, that's exactly what he does. He wipes out half of the universe at the end of the movie. And mm -hmm. you see him just sitting down outside watching the sunset. He's on some remote planet. We don't know where it is because they don't really tell us. Right. And he feels like he has fulfilled his destiny, and he is done. That's it. Okay. Um, what is that? Well, I mean, this is a helicopter. <laughs> so, um, obviously... They heard me talking. They're yeah. like, spoiler alert. Uh, obviously, some of the controversy is who dies in right. the film. Um, some of the people that die, I, I had predicted... Well, before we Years get to ago. the deaths, I want to talk about the placement of the Infinity Stones because okay. 
not now, all of them were were accounted for by the time coming into this movie. Uh, especially only one of them wasn't the Soul Stone. The Soul Stone, and that reveal was amazing. Was awesome because that was a callback to a character that people thinks uh, people thought that they just forgot about or just had nothing else to do with, which was Red Skull from right. the original Captain America. He had the what's tesseract. The, the tesseract, which teleported him somewhere. Correct. But the tesseract went on its own without him. Correct. So the tesseract showed up where Loki wound up having it at one point. So you knew where that was, and the tesseract became the space stone, but you never knew what happened to Red Skull. You didn't know what happened to the Soul Stone, and it happened to be on this planet where... Now, I had to read up on this because I didn't understand why Red Skull was there. Right. From what I'm understanding, you know the Marvel Universe better than I do, but the devil character mm-hmm. that exists in the Marvel Universe, Luther, um Mephisto? Yeah, Mephisto. Yes. Okay. Who, I guess, in a way, sort of befriends Thanos in, in the books or he something does. like that? He does. He's sort of... He is sort of Thanos's, um He's like Thanos' right-hand man. He's almost a little bit like the Loki early on in the Infinity okay. Gauntlet storyline. Like, he's kind of helping Thanos out and guiding him and prodding him a little bit. But he's pretty much the devil equivalent of... Uh, the devil... No, not the de- devil representative in the Marvel Universe. A- absolutely correct, yes. Right. So Just Disney can't use him. Is Oh, they can't? Why? No, because he's traditionally a Fantastic Four character. And a Ghost Rider character, which means Fox probably has the rights to Mephisto. Well, if they get the... <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Right. But uh, until that point, so yes. is was it that they're using Red Skull in, in that role? No, I don't think so. No, because Red Skull even kind of says that after losing the Tesseract, he wanted to still try to get the stones, and he went in search of the Soul Stone. He wasn't able to get the Soul Stone... Because he had nothing to sacrifice. Because he had nothing to sacrifice, because he was there by himself. Right. And getting the stone requires a sacrifice. Right. Um... So so when yeah. Thanos sacri- made the sacrifice, I'll, right. we'll leave that part alone. He makes the, th- the sacrifice, obtains the Soul Stone. Right. Does that le- and is Red Skull just still s- st- stuck on that planet after yeah. Thanos left? Yeah. So that's probably where his story ends. I, I guess unless they figure out a way to bring him back. Hmm. Okay. I mean, I I, he, I was excited to see him. Yeah. I just didn't know what they were going to do with him I, po- from this point. I mean, and we're, 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 so Thanos' sacrifice in the film is Gamora. He kills Gamora. His daughter. I suspect that her death will not stick. Well, he had a flashback or some kind of... He had a flashback. Celestial connection to her where she was a kid on a... What are those? Are they pagodas or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, where it's just like this pagoda in the water and uh, Thanos is having some kind of like mind connection with her as a kid. Right. And And you don't... It doesn't really explain what that scene was, just that he had this experience. I I, I mean, I I interpreted that scene as like... That she's not fully dead. No, I, I interpreted it as he was talking much like you would talk... Much like you talk in your inner monologue to your ancestors, let's say. You know what I mean? Like, you have that that conversation with your dead grandma in your head. You know what I mean? Like, that was someone you looked up to or had a close connection with. I kind of saw it as he had fulfilled his destiny, and the hardest thing for him to do was to sacrifice Gamora, because you learn that he actually did love Gamora. Um, And I think it was kind of just, I think that was his guilt, because she's like, well, did you do it? Did you do what you had to do? Mm-hmm. Did you do what you felt like you needed to do? Did, do you think I think that, that's what that like was. It's like a Stannis Baratheon thing where he had like killed his daughter in like Game of Thrones or whatever. Yeah, and like, did yeah. you really do that? Like yeah, sacrifice yeah. She's her? trapped in the soul stone? I don't know. So I think I think one of two things. I think either she's not actually dead, that the soul stone didn't actually require her to die. It just required the him. The action of the, the sacrifice. The action of the sacrifice itself. That's one. Or two. Two, they're going to use the time stone and just reverse everything. Well, that's what everybody thinks. Yeah, and that's what I thought I, too. Because when at the end, everybody dies. Right. Uh, majority. A lot of, of people. Majority die. Of people die. Not everybody dies. Um, but you could kind of see at that point where that was where the ending was, where it cuts to him sitting on the on the <laughs> sitting on the yeah. porch in the countryside, looking yeah. at a sunrise and drinking a mint julep, and <laughs> and you got the feeling like. Wow, the villain won. That's how the movie ended, yeah. which is great. Even if they didn't have a part two, the fact that a villain won justified right. in the movie was a great because it, a movie never ends like that. Sure. So it was very unique. It was unique. the Empire ending. Right. It was very unique. Yeah. Um, but the fact that you're know, like, well, the, the time stone's still in play. He can reverse it because you saw what he did to, um, what's his name? Vision. Vision. Yeah. Sorry, I spaced there for a second. Where they destroy the stone to protect him, but then all of a sudden 
Thanos used the time stone to bring him back and then tortured him, ripped it out of him. Which, by the way, Vision, but that's in the trailer, right? No, no, it's not. Uh, I the, there was that shot in the trailer of him like pulling the stone out of his head. Was there? Yeah, there was totally a shot in the trailer of like oh, Thanos like wow. like going to Vision and like pulling a stone oh, out of his head. Like that. I totally remember yeah. seeing that. Oh, that's a huge spoiler then if if that's in the trailer. Um, I definitely remember seeing that because oh, I I don't know how I knew that and I yeah. haven't seen them. Um. <laughs> I think the only deaths that stick are Loki and Heimdall. Because they were done before his, the possession of the stone. Yeah, well, I mean, so was Gamora, but but I don't see how they don't... I don't see how Peter doesn't figure out how to bring Gamora back if she's actually dead. Um, but I, I have a question. Yeah, sure. Because all of this, and this is maybe my... I don't know if this is like going into comic world or something, yeah. but... Are the Avengers in a universe or a multiverse? Universe. Universe. Marvel okay. doesn't really have a multiverse. Well, that's not okay. True. Well, because I didn't know if like because I know Doctor yeah. Strange could go through like different dimensions, so I didn't know like if maybe there was like a different dimension but, where everyone's still alive. No. Yeah, so but, his he doesn't really go to different dimensions. He goes to different planes of existence. Okay. When he was in the dark, uh, the dark matter. Um, you know what I mean. Matter, uh, so it's not. Yeah, yeah, no, I know, I know what you're. I know. What yeah, you're yeah, it's a what different planet. It? So, Doctor Strange has a moment in the movie where he is meditating on the Eye of Agamotto, which is his little, uh, thing, right? which is one of the stones as well. Yeah. It's, it's one of the stones. Stone. Yeah, and he sees something like He's whatever good. it is, four he, he, million, fourteen million scenarios yeah. of how to beat Thanos, and they, there's only there's one. only one in which <laughs> they succeed. Right. I suspect. What I suspect is that this is the path to the one where they succeed. They had to let him win in order for him to lose. Correct. That, yeah. That's what I think. And the gauntlet is destroyed at the end of the movie. He, well, he so snaps his fingers. He, snap, like, he snaps his fingers. And does that, he undoes everything. Right. Right. But after. But but the gauntlet is destroyed. You see it all chart up when Thor plunges Stormbreaker through his chest. Right. <laughs> His yeah. armor is all burnt up. The gauntlet is all burnt up. And he doesn't have the gauntlet in the final sequence. When he walks up onto the little porch <laughs> to watch he, no, the sunset. No, he has it in his hand. No, he doesn't. His hands are purple. He doesn't have the, the brittle. No. So we don't know where it is. Correct. Well, here, all right, let me ask you this then. The Peter Dinklage scenes where he plays yeah, the giant dwarf. The, the which giant is dwarf, which is funny, yeah. Um, the first thing that you see in that scene is he has the mold for the for gauntlet. For the gauntlet, correct. So... Now, I know at some point in Marvel, they had two gauntlets Yeah, because it went from six stones to eight stones or something like yeah. that, something, something weird. So do they make another gauntlet to harness these powers okay. again, or is there this another gauntlet they're going to make to fight that gauntlet? So or? Peter Dinklage's little co commentary when you first see him um, is kind of telling in that he says that Thanos approached him to make something that would help him harness the stones. Which tells me that he didn't have to make a gauntlet. I think the gauntlet it is almost a show of power. It looks daunting, right? Right. But I think he could have made anything that could have harnessed the stones. He could make an axe that the stones fit in on. Okay. He can make a cod piece. It doesn't yeah. have to be in a glove. Yeah, the, but, the infinite jock strap. You know what I mean? Like, but anything. you saw the model of that, so yes. you assume it's going to be another gauntlet. Well. Maybe e either that or either that or yeah, it might, maybe it's going to be another gauntlet. I, who knows? I don't know what it's going to be. All right. Let me ask you a few more questions sure. then for because we don't know what's going to happen in part two, but I want to get to part two in just a moment. Okay. Here. But to wrap up part one. So half the universe dies and you see them all um, dissipate. <clears throat> Almost like burning embers. It's right. like they they the uh, it's almost all like a vampire ending. Yeah, like when they burn up internally yeah. and they just turn into ash and blow away in the and wind. And it's major right? characters. It's and Winter Soldier, they Black did Panther. All right, yeah. they, they did it in a way that actually, uh, I'm you know, comic book fans, whatever, kind of had an idea where this was yeah. going. But if you weren't, if you were just the movie fan or parents or whatever, yeah. this is what I'm getting at. When major characters died, the I heard two huge outcries uh -huh. when people were dying and I'll tell you the two points okay one was Black Panther of course everybody every black person in the audience mm -hmm. mostly ladies yeah no like I yeah. heard yelling no from older ladies sure. and stuff they were all upset the other one and this is I heard from other people was when Peter Parker was going that was a rough in, one. in uh, the hands of he was being held by Tony Stark 
and he says, I don't feel well, sir. Yeah. And then he, um, you know, evaporates right. and Tony's just kind of frozen because you then really saw the father son bond for the first time. It wasn't just this kid is idolizing me and I'm, you know, the apprentice kind of deal. It, it showed for the first time because not too long before that, he dubbed him, knighted him, yeah, an, an official Avenger. Avenger. Yeah. Then this death scene happened. He's like, I don't feel well, sir. And Tony feels responsible for him. Right. Okay, yeah, but did you not sense like he? It was almost like a father son bond the way that was going no, there. It absolutely is. okay. Oh no, that's the first is. time I saw that in the in the at least in the movie. Yeah, it, no, it absolutely. You even get a sense of that a little bit in Homecoming, I think. That that Tony is sort of mentoring. You get that in them. the trailer, like yeah. he goes, he, he's like reaching to get the door, and he gives him the hug. He's like, I was just getting the door for you. you yeah, know what yeah, I mean, like, like it was very much like that. Yeah, I, I think Peter, because Peter doesn't have a father figure, right. Um, he Till looks, the end of he, time. He, yeah, ah. he clearly looks up to um, Tony, and so Tony is sort of like this weird pseudo mentor or father figure. And Tony very much feels responsible for Peter. You realize that Peter really is just a kid, right? Like the the kid and the fear, because almost everybody else's death was very kind of like oh shit or matter of fact. Like Tony's, like uh, Nick Fury was like ah oh, shit, you know like well we, we'll get yeah. to Nick in a second too. Um, but like like you know Winter Soldier just kind of goes, he doesn't say anything, he yeah. just goes. Well, yeah. here's the thing: like, are they really going to be dead? Are they no, going to be back? No, of course not. Absolutely not. That's a, that's the thing. Like, yeah, like, and that's what's weird about it because everyone's like, everyone died. I'm like, well, there's no way everyone. Like, who's the people who are definitely not coming? Right. Back? But so I Look, think logically, I think Loki and Heimdall are the only right. two that come back. Logically, it was hard to that don't pull come back the, or come back. That don't come back. Don't come back. Okay. Everybody else, I think, well, comes back. Loki's died many times in the comic books. And he come has, back, but right? I think. Uh, his time has come and gone. Okay, fair enough. He's a very low-key character. <laughs> um, the deaths were meant to be a holy S moment yeah. that people never saw coming. Um, it was a little hard to... I think what they could have done a little better is if they didn't kill off the ones that have known sequels coming, that would probably would have added another yeah. layer of like, oh my God, what's going yeah, on but here? Here's the thing. That's the thing, yeah. Here's the genius of it. We all know that Black Panther 2 is coming. It yeah. was a huge news that they greenlit a second Black Panther film. Right. right? And especially even it's, after the credits of Black Panther, it's like, stay tuned. There's going to yeah, be more Black like, Panther coming up. So, like, it's almost genius that they chose to kill Black Panther and still fooled people. Like, good for them. Well, good for them. The thing, like, or the I audience is really just stupid. It's one or the other. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of people who are just casual fans who yeah. just watch the movie, who don't follow too much of the backstory, who might not even know about the roadmap. You know what I mean? They're just like, right. oh, it's the next superhero movie. Right. And they go and see it. They're like, oh, shit, they're dead. They're like, what? Right. You know, they don't know. Right. They're, 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 not everybody out there knows that the guy who plays Winter Soldier, Sebastian Stan, right, has got like seven more films on his Marvel contract. Right. Like, not everybody knows Just that. Fix your mic and, so, like, sure, and, like, and Spider-Man, it's like the only movie he's had was Homecoming. So it's like, you know that he's going to be coming back. And they've, like, already, he's they've announced it. They've announced the sequel. It's yeah, on the map. I, I said that's why I was, yeah. was curious as to why they people that they knew had known sequels, why they killed them off. I thought it would have added another layer if they left them and killed off the other people that you weren't sure about. Well, it's it's interesting because like they left Tony Stark alive, but I you have to leave Tony Stark alive. Well, really? Yeah. yeah, because he is still he is still the cornerstone of that universe. But I don't, don't think he's, he's the anchor of that. He's he was the, he was the boat that set it going, and now he's the anchor holding right. it down. You know but what I mean? Like he's he not, is the he is not, the Marvel. They, they him and Chris Evans have said they're not looking to continue these roles. We thought for a while, remember, that he would take over the Nick Fury kind of role I down the line. I still think he might. But if he's not going to be part of the movies anymore, then why wouldn't they kill him off? Because I think he's still going to be part of the movies. We know Chris he's Evans totally is going to movies. die. Yeah, so, right. So, so that was that was the shock. The shock was that they didn't kill Cap. I think I know why they didn't They're kill Cap. saving it for the second half? Yeah, okay, so there's a scene, <laughs> there's a scene in the movie where you wanted to talk about the second one, so that, let's talk the, about it. We didn't see it; cause it's in the trailer, but it's not in the first movie. Is this the one where he's down on the like that? No, no, no. Oh. There, there's there's a scene in the movie itself in in Infinity War where he is holding Thanos's hand, right, with the gauntlet, and yeah. Thanos is trying to close his fist because in order to activate the stones, he has to like. You know, yeah. close the well, that's that shot in the trailer where they're like, yeah. and like and, fighting. Right? And Cap is holding and fighting his fist from closing. And Thanos has this look in his eye like, oh shit, this guy shouldn't be able to do that. 
It's the same look that Thor gives Captain America when Cap almost lifts Mjolnir. Yeah. In yeah, the, where he's just like, hey, wait a second. Yeah, hey, wait a second. That kind of like, wait a second. Yeah, right, exactly. So I suspect what's going to happen is I think, um, we talked about this on Geek Stuff this week too, but I think Cap is going to be the one that eventually reverses it. He's going to wield the Infinity Stones to reverse it, but because he's not super powered like Thanos is, or as or, much as or, Thanos is, it's going to kill him. Yeah, so it's not like, like a pe- one-way ticket to bringing everything it's back. Not like It'll a, be the ultimate sacrifice for it's him. It's not like a Star-Lord thing where he had the right. stone, stone was still managed to outlive the, the that power was coming stone. through. Right, right. yeah. Um, another thing, the Hulk. Yeah. The lack thereof, the Hulk. Yeah. I like the fact that but it was funny. The Hulk got beat up and all of a sudden became afraid and didn't want to appear again he because had performance Thanos, anxiety. Beat him, Thanos beat him up. Yeah. Hulk had performance anxiety. Right. Like Bruce Banner is in the Hulkbuster armor right. because he can't turn, turn into, turn the, into Hulk. the Hulk. It's, I thought it was fu- I thought it was clever. I thought it was very funny, but Funko spoiled that because they said, hey, new Avenger pops are coming out, and then you see the the one pop of the Hulk coming out of the yeah, Hulk Buster. Okay. I'm like, ah, oh, damn yeah, it. They but, ruined it. But here's the thing, though. I saw that I saw that dumb Funko pop, right? Right. And I'm waiting the whole movie yep. for him to bust out of the Me Hulk too. armor. When he gets locked, when he gets trapped in the stone, right. when Thanos throws Hulk into the stone, right. and he's kind of like more... I'm like, oh, this is the scene. This is where he's going to... Here it comes. Like, no. Nothing. He ne- so th- that pop was really a big... Jerk off move because they never he never actually turns into the Hulk, and but it probably out happens in the second movie. Maybe, which I like the one part where he's like, "Come on, let's do it." He's turning green, and the in the Hulk face starting to show, and he just goes, "No!" and then yeah. disappears, and then snaps back like nothing ever happened. And I, I'll tell you why I think they had to do that because I think if you took the Hulk and the power that the Hulk has would have the been over physical too fast. Pa- the physical power that the Hulk has in those Marvel movies and pitted him against Thanos, right? If Captain America is strong I was just enough, say, if, he, if he could hold that, if fist, Captain America like is strong enough to stop that fist, stopped. Hulk would have just eaten Thanos, right? Given the opportunity with his friends around him to distract him and all that, Hulk would have overpowered him. Hulk I think you just crushed his yeah, head. I, I think you needed to castrate Hulk, but you couldn't remove him from the film. So I think they found a really funny, clever way, okay, to handle that. I'm going to say this then, based on what you just said. Now that I'm thinking about it, removing the Hulk. One, again, makes Captain, the way this is projecting, a lot right. stronger than we thought he was. Two, it also helped by not having him there, making Thor more godlike than he realized that he was. When he cleared house, landing down in Wakanda. With Stormbreaker, you're like, it was amazing. Oh my God. Like, he's just, boo. Yeah. That big sonic blast. And you're like, Thor is now, because remember his dad said, yeah. the hammer was just to get you to focus. Right. The hammer wasn't your yeah, power. Yeah, you're not the god of hammers. Yeah, it, it's yeah. like now, he's like, you can, you're can. you the god of lightning. Yeah. You can do these things, but he wasn't focused on it. You've had the power of the Schwartz all along. Well, yes. Like right. you said in a Cracker Jack box. <laughs> so now he knows that the you know, the Schwartz is with him, and he can. he's now starting to see where, right. when he held the shutter open yeah. for the power of the star mm-hmm. to come through and didn't die, he's just like, oh my god, I can do this. Yeah, yeah. So now you're going to see a much stronger Thor. Captain may go the way you go. When Hulk finally shows up is going to probably be the last part cleaning house after Cap dies, maybe. Yeah, because Banner is still around. So Cap will yeah. probably die and then th- and then Hulk is clean up right. with all of this. Uh, another thing I wanted to bring up uh, for two, uh, we saw the closing credits. Mm-hmm. The, him with the pager for Captain Marvel. Yeah. So this will be her first introduction into the world before her origin movie, which is set in the 1990s, which you don't have to worry about that well, at you, this point. Well, you do, though. We'll talk about that in a second, but though. But from what I read in in the about Captain Marvel is that her and Nick Fury existed together in a story back in the 90s where they met and, and were working together and this is what leads to everything else well, that happens. Samuel L. Jackson is in the Captain Marvel movie as yeah, I know. young, I know, two-eyed I saw stills. Yeah, as young, two-eyed Nick Fury. Did you see the haircut? They yeah. gave him the little flat top? Yeah, yeah. pre-patch. Yeah, um, I think and it's it's obviously planning on their part. They know exactly what they're doing. Yeah. I think they it's genius. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They know what they're doing for the past years. I think it's Wait. genius that the next two films that come out don't take place after Infinity War. Uh, Ant Man takes place before, just prior to, and, and concurrent with. Okay, and 
Captain Marvel is set in the 90s. Right. So, because I saw someone the other day and they were like, I don't understand why we have to wait for Avengers 4 mm-hmm. when, how are these next two movies going to deal with the aftermath of Infinity War? Because they're before the movie. Yeah, they Avengers. don't have to deal with the aftermath right. of this movie. Well, we still don't see Ant-Man and we don't see um, Hawkeye. Did you see that little, did you see that little thing they did? The So the day after Infinity War opened, or two days after Infinity War opened, but the day before the new Ant-Man and Wasp trailer came out. Oh, was this that little video clip online? They did a little video clip with all with a bunch of the cast yes, of, Avengers, of Avengers. And it was, where was Ant-Man and Wasp during Infinity War? And then it War? just cuts to them staring awkwardly at the camera? <laughs> yeah, yeah it was pretty that. funny, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so we're going to see Captain Marvel. Uh, we'll find out where she is, why yep. she's never been around. on on. Uh, she's probably not on Earth. but She's not. She's on. She's probably with the Kree somewhere. Okay, but uh, we, yeah, we find out why she wasn't there for the first Avengers attack right. and, and then Ultron and all these other things, but now is the time that she's going to sure. make this appearance. So that's still coming in the second one. The, the Hulk I have a, make, just another quick question. Sure. This might be just going a little further back. Is it random who died when he flipped his fingers? Or like, how did Who decided who died? It was random. It was, it was all random. It was random. It was the okay. power of the universe. The, the idea, what, the idea is that it was random. Because like I know, like at the end, like, there's the after credit scene with the text. I was like, how did they know that? Like, Ms., like Marvel didn't just be one of the people who died with the fingers. I mean, I mean, in theory, it could have been. Okay, but but Nick Fury dies. Yeah, he's one of the ones that disappears, and so does. Yeah, I heard, he, I heard it was like a small shit and like an oh shit moment. He was like, oh no, and he's like turns the sand or something like yeah. uh, Apocalypse or whatever that yeah. other movie was. So in theory, Thanos has no control over it. I guess the only one he knows won't die, I guess, is himself, maybe because he's wielding the stones. Right. Okay. But otherwise, he has no idea who's going to die and who's going to survive. He doesn't get I like to the like the one pick. scene where he's talking after he stabbed Tony Stark yeah. and he goes, I really respect you. I hope they remember you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he's like I have a lot of respect for you. You're still a dick, but yeah. I hope the people remember what you tried to do for them. Um for part 2, do you think we see Adam Warlock? Yeah. I do. We have to. I think he saw, plays he was, a role in Adam Warlock is this creation from the elite at the it was the it was a credit scene from Guardians of the Galaxy right. 2. The gold people yeah, created yeah. um they splice stuff together and he's supposed to be is he related to Thanos or something? No, he's like like a cosmic entity. He's. I thought he because the, they all seemed the, all the celestial stuff seemed to be related to each other. Nah. Every time I read stuff, and Thanos isn't a celestial, but he's on, he's related to eternity to death. No, and, he's not. All right, then the list I read was completely no, wrong. No, no, Thanos is Thanos was just Thanos was an inhabitant of the of the moon of Titan. Like there were other Thanoses, there were other purple dudes with. With nutsack chins. When he called him Do they Grimace. all look like Thanos from like the, the yeah, from that's that his, planet? Yeah, that's his race. It's his, like it's like Gazorpazorp. Like everyone in Gazorpazorp yeah. is like, okay. Yeah. His race is Titans. All right, so Adam okay. Warlock is supposed yeah. to show up. I remember there's a story in one, was it in the Infinity Gauntlet miniseries where Adam gets the gauntlet? Yeah, we, yeah so Adam kind of is bad sort of in one of them. Well, he's good in some parts and he's bad in the other. Yeah, well, because he, he has an alter ego too, yeah, right? And he has one of the stones at one point in time. And um, but I think we see Adam Warlock finally in part two. All right. So does Adam Warlock become the, another new bad, or does he take on Thanos too, or what? No, I think he's part of the solution of getting rid of Thanos. Yeah. Okay. Maybe before, he helps so he's gather the stones he's up, he's or something. Before he goes bad. Yeah, yeah. So what do they do? They just go to the Titan now, and they're like, "Hey, Thanos, like, why'd you do all this shit?" Well, you get the impression that. You get the impression that Thanos might be the last of his race. Of his race, yeah, because you gotcha. don't see anything um, else. Because you don't see anybody else on Titan when they go back to Titan, and Thanos is not on Titan at the end of the movie. You don't know where he is because the planet that he's on at the end of the movie is pretty. It's lush okay. and green. It's like he's in Kentucky, and 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 Ugh. Titan looks like you know desolate and destroyed and. You know, completely fucked over. It looks like a uh, like a Cherno- Chernobyl yeah. setting where you had a nuclear but like, accident. But if he has the time stone, why wouldn't he just go back? I don't think to it, the power his of his planet was like overpopulated. Because and fix it then. I think in his mind, I think in his mind, he just thinks that that the path is inevitable, and that, that no this, matter what happens, that no matter happen, what happens, so this well is going to happen. Forward. So now how do I stop it from getting worse? I didn't th- well, I also think he wants to be the only Titan. I think that's part of the hubris. Okay. 
Let me so ask- so there is like a little more like he wants to do it for the good of everyone, but he also has like a little bit of like yeah. yeah but I will still be the last. Yeah, of but that was like me. Yeah, like I want the yeah. credit for that. Yeah. D- does yeah, okay, the time gotcha. stone not work like that? Like, does it only work in the immediate setting where you can reverse time, or can you just sit there and go back to the history of the universe and change anything you want? I don't. Because otherwise, I don't know. I, I don't think, know. I, I don't, think it would have to be limited in order to write yeah, these stories. I, I don't know how many. I don't know how much time you can play with. Yeah. Because even well, then, when we but see it in Doctor, Doctor Strange, Strange how many times he loops the end in Doctor Strange right, until he gets it right? But it's all within the immediacy of a couple of minutes. Yeah, yeah that's it's true. not like he's not going back and a that thousand was a, years. That was or a whatever. closed loop. That wasn't right. scanning through time. That was a he set a, a particular amount of time on that time loop, so that when he died, it hit the loop. He came back again and did the same thing over and over till the. What yeah, like Thanos name? isn't gonna like go back in time, like get the, a T Rex and then the come villain? back to Dorma- the future. Dormammu. Dormammu yeah. went. All right, enough. I mercy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was just wondering because I'm like, he could go back through all this time. Maybe the stone is very limited to the yeah. se- setting that you're in. Who knows? Um, but anyway, the movie was great. I loved it. <clears throat> it was not long at all. Uh, I wanted more out of it, and now we got to wait a year for part two. I'm. Ho- uh, I don't know. Is there any other predictions that you have for part two? No. What's no, it? Just, is it to be called Infinity Wars Part Two, or is yeah. it gonna be like no. the end so of the Infinity Wars? The original called, title the, was Infinity Stones War Part. No, the original title was Infinity War Part One and Two, and yeah. then like halfway through production, they were like, "Well, Infinity War Part Two is no longer the title of the second film," and I think that's because logistically, I think the Infinity War is over. I think at the end of the first film, it's over. Thanos wins. I think that's how they want it to feel. And so then the second one is going to be like... It'll have its own... Totally, right, it'll it's going to be a sequel to it, but a different like, trajectory. Yeah, it, it'll be a direct sequel. It will rectify the events of the first movie, but I don't think they wanted to just call it part one and two. They'll want to call... you know, Maybe they want to call it Infinity Crusade, because that was one of the books too, or, yeah. you know, or Infinity something else and not Infinity War, because I think... The Infinity Aftermath. Yeah, maybe it is Aftermath. I actually think that, that that's a book too. So, but I think I think the idea is when the movie ends, and the movie ends with just Thanos sitting on the porch. I think the idea is that no, the war is over. Thanos wins. The war is over. There's no okay. more. There's no more war. There is a clear. There is a clear victor. <laughs> a clear victor <laughs> at the end of this movie. The guy who killed half of everything in the entire universe usually wins. Right. right that's what I mean. So you know what I mean. Like <laughs> I, I think that. I think they wanted to get away from the idea of war part two, because I think war part two also makes you think, well, obviously there's going to be some sort of reconciliation. And I think, you know, being halfway smart and knowing how movies work, you know, there's going to be a reconciliation, but it's also kind of a little vague. Okay. You know, does does that make sense? So does Dr. Strange turn to sand too? He does. Okay, so that so means say, if he did, else that, has that, that maybe he can go to the other plane and like talk to people and be like, "Hey, you guys are here on this plane with me." Yeah, no, he like, does. I know you guys got t- turned to sand, like X Men Apocalypse, right. but like you know we gotta like fix this. But I, I, so I think I think what we're learning about Steve Rogers though is that Steve can potentially wield Mjolnir. Steve yeah. can potentially wield the Infinity Gauntlet, which means he should be able to wield the Time Stone. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I he think- puts on the gauntlet, picks up like Mjolnir, or whatever, yeah. just like starts wrecking house. Yeah, like I think if I think if you keep Doctor Strange alive, that's too easy. He yeah. finds a stone, he reverses it, everybody yeah. wins. Like you have to, you have to take Doctor Strange you out of the picture. Take the magic out of it. You got to take the, you got to take him out of the picture because you have to set somebody else up. To reverse it. That, that's what I think. Um, reading here real quick, it says that uh, they purposely did not reveal the title for, for four. Um, how do you say his name? Kev- Fe- Fe- Feige. 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 Um, he said it's gotten completely blown out of proportion. It will just be a name, and the reason to hold it back was to keep the attention on Infinity War. That backfired a little bit because now everyone thinks, what's the name of the next one going to be? But really, it was just to keep the focus on Infinity War. So it'll just probably be Avengers 4 or something no, like I'm that. No, I'm telling you, I bet it's going to be like Infinity Crusade or Infinity After. It's going to be Infinity something, I bet. And I bet we'll get that announcement at the end of Captain Marvel. Okay. The Avenging Avengers, the people who avenge the Avengers. That's it. <laughs> 
Well, um, anyways, it was a great movie. It's yes. out in theaters right now. It's probably by this weekend uh, hitting the one billion dollar threshold. I, I, yes, absolutely. Because uh, I haven't seen any news updates yet, but I give it Friday night, and I bet you Saturday morning it's it's broken a, a billion dollars, no doubt. And it's the look whether you like them or not, it's the biggest movie of all time. Yeah, the biggest opening. It may be the biggest box office by the time this thing is done. It will be, this is the standard, the threshold that you have to compare everything else, whether you like whatever genre of film it is, whatever art, this is the standard that everything's going to be set against now. Exactly. And even, Until in five years when movie tickets are $5 more a ticket and then like, you know, Lassie 5 beats it because it just, <laughs> tickets cost more money. Um, it was also nice to see that the Lucasfilm property sent yeah, out their congratulations their little publicly. little congratulations, yeah. Where literally they were passing the torch to... Um, uh, where Ray was passing the to- the star- lightsaber to <laughs> Tony, Tony Stark, Stark yeah. saying congratulations on, on beating us and being the biggest movie of all time, exactly. which is very nice. Because but they, said they, they always do that, though, because didn't that happen with like Jurassic World, too, where they sent like, started, a raptor thing with like, started, Chris Pratt? And I read like, up on it. It started them. with Lucas and Spielberg, where when Lucas had Star Wars come out, which I guess Spielberg helped with some stuff behind the scenes, um, he sent some artwork where it was R two D two fishing and pulling Jaws out of the water because yeah. Jaws was the biggest movie at the time and said congratulations. And then when <coughs> Jurassic Park came out, it was Star Wars doing something with a with a dinosaur where Lucasfilm sent over to Spielberg yeah. congratulations. So it was just a friendly do you, rivalry. Do you think the executives at Warner Brothers are, are waiting for their <laughs> their little print? Batman. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, it's it's nice that even though you know like Star Wars like damn it you know we got beat by Marvel but they're all under the uh, same umbrella sure and they all know in the whole scheme of things if those Marvel movies keep bringing in a billion dollars we can do whatever we want making yeah, Star Wars right. okay. so as long as we're both doing great who cares who has the top thing and meanwhile they're just flicking the Batman light switch <laughs> in the back saying you know we have yeah. these properties too yeah um, they're, they're sitting back they're like wait till they see Iron Man click 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 I mean or uh, Aquaman rather I am not gonna go on any sort of tirade and I know we have to go especially because yes. I have to go but um, I'm not gonna go on any sort of tirade but I do feel we would be remiss in not saying that <laughs> Infinity War and its opening weekend Weekend, almost made as much as Justice League did in its entire run. Yeah, yes. I saw, I saw that. that meme going around. Yeah. I was like, yeah, that's probably one thousand percent accurate. Yeah, no, it, they they missed it by like less than ten million dollars. Yeah, I think. it was not that far off. <laughs> yeah. Um, so all right, so we're gonna have to wrap up here for for today. Next week we're gonna have to talk about Deadpool too because we haven't done anything on that, and that's no. coming up in a few weeks. I got my ticket. Nice. I'm all set and ready for that. With Solo that being, is what, next week or two weeks? Uh, no, the 18th. May 18th. It's okay, a few yeah. weeks. Yeah, it's we still got weeks. time. With that being said, let's go around and do the plugs. Matt OG, what do you have? You can find me on social media, Geek Stuff OG, on all those platforms, and you can check out new episodes of Geek Stuff, the podcast, by searching for Geek Stuff and all of your favorite podcast apps, and bkgeekstuff.com when the website works. Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com backslash bkgeekstuff. If you want to get on all that bonus content and support the show and, and, you know, some perks. Okay. Giddles, what do you have? Uh, Giddle base on the Twitter, Instagram, and Xbox Live. And uh, May 12th, uh, me and a friend are putting on a geek flea market and... Uh, a uh, little like food market thing, like a crafter fair at the Queens Brewery in Ridgewood. So it's gonna be fun. I'm gonna be making like a whole bunch of different foods. There's gonna be people there selling like handmade soaps and like comic books and like I'm magic really cards and nerd stuff. Go. And it's it's all free. You don't have to pay anything to enter. You know, there's gonna be beer, hot dogs, like nachos. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So uh, we'll I'll tweet out more info on the show account when uh, when I have a fire up. But it I, should I, be fun. I hope it does really well. So you have another one. So maybe I can go to the next one. <laughs> yeah, man. Like this is uh, this is the inaugural one and nice. I think it's going to be good because we know the we know the people at the brewery we're friends with them like they're really chill and like they saw us playing magic there one night and they're like you guys play magic we're like yeah they're like you want to organize a magic night or a geek night here we're like yes please like let us do that <laughs> <That's> <laughs> awesome. so we're doing it all right I'm gonna have to come out to that Sweet. that sounds like yeah, a lot of fun uh, for me it's e-rock radio across the board social media for the show it's Eric Nagel across the board social media uh Listen to us. Tell your friends if you can. Listen to us on iHeartRadio, Spotify, all the places you can find podcasts. We are there. And I think that's about it. Oh, also, this Saturday, if you're listening to it uh, for the what's today? the 5th, May the 5th, yeah. um, from 12 to 3, I'm going to be down at the Secret Stash in Red Bank because Ooh. Kevin Smith's going to be down there doing a signing with Funko. 
for his Funko Pops. So uh, I'm going to be down there hanging out with them, having a good time. So if you're in the area, you want to come down, you go meet Kevin Smith. There Get a go. Funko Pop. Go by all means do that. And finally, uh, I just wanted to touch on this and then we can get out of here. Uh, Opie put out his trailer for his new podcast. It starts on May 9th. Mm -hmm. So you can go to Opie Radio on YouTube. You can hear the little teaser thing for what he's going to be doing there. Uh, congratulations to him, and I'm sure he'll do just fine. So sure. check that out when that comes May 9th. All right, that's it. So until the next time, be excellent to each other. And we'll be seeing you. It's Eric Nagel. And that's all the time we have. Follow the show at It's Eric Nagel on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. <clears throat> Unless we do something stupid or <laughs> something better comes along. We'll be back next time. 